Overcoming Temptation. Part 2, pages 63 to 66. Most prevalent among the lessons for the Corinthian Christians to learn from the experiences of the children of Israel was not to be overconfident in the midst of God's blessings. The Jews who had been delivered from Egyptian bondage and whom God poured his blessings on in the desert knew that they were God's special possession. This knowledge calls some of them to begin to take his care and concern for granted and turn to their own evil desires. Scholars generally agree that several million Jews were delivered from bondage in Egypt and wandered in the wilderness with Moses of those millions, only to live to enter the promised land. Paul's warning to those Corinthians who, thinketh, Greek word, dokio, meaning to be of the opinion or suppose, they standeth, Greek word, histomy, meaning to make firm, fix, or establish, should be careful. The Jews delivered from and blessed by God eventually stumbled and fell. The Corinthians were to be careful as well as not to become indifferent to God's blessing for fear that they would ultimately stumble and fall. Recognizing Temptation 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 through 22 Overcoming temptation is easier when we identify it and choose not to pay its high price. Particular ways we can overcome temptation include 1. Examination of oneself 2. Recognition of commonality of temptation 3. Acceptance of God's way out Be open to repentance or avoidance of sin And 4. Willingness to flee idolatry Scholars generally agree that there are three sources of our temptations Our environments, Satan, and our own sinful nature it is easy to think that God must be the source of our temptations and that, at times, those temptations are unique to us, but Paul corrected that assertion. God is not the source of our temptation, Greek word, pyrasmos, pyrasmos, meaning an enticement to sin, whether arising from desires or outward circumstances, and no temptation is unique to a given individual. Paul understood that threats to the Corinthian church came both from without and within, and he counseled the church members to flee from it all. Remember that what you give yourself to is the thing you belong to. Paul asked those within the Corinthian church who considered themselves wise men Greek word. Phronimos, phronimos, meaning intelligent or mindful of one's interest, to judge Greek word. Crino, frino, meaning to determine or consider, what he was saying as to how sensible their practice of eating meat that had been offered to idols truly was. He then offered three types of meals for their consideration. The first meal that Paul wanted the Corinthian church to reflect upon was the Lord's Supper. The phrase cup of blessing is a Hebraism, the name given to the third cup of the Passover feast over which a prayer of thanksgiving was pronounced. Paul helped the Corinthians reflect on the fact that the cup they blessed Greek word, eulogia, eulogia, was not the actual cup as in pagan festivals, but was in fact the prayer of praise and laudation of Christ the one true God. This they confirmed with their communion, Greek word, koinonia, koinonia, meaning fellowship, association, or joint participation with the blood of Christ. The fact that Paul placed the cup before the breaking of the bread was probably to help emphasize the supremacy of the cup of Christ's blood and the fact that bread did not play a part in pagan festivals. The second meal that Paul wanted the Corinthian church to reflect upon was Israel after the flesh. This referred to national Israel, which still observed the sacrificial rituals of the synagogue as opposed to spiritual Israel, which was God's inheritance. Paul wanted the Corinthians to understand that they were God's spiritual possession, and when they partook of the blood and bread of Christ, they affirmed their fellowship with his kingdom. The third meal that Paul wanted the Corinthian church to reflect upon took them back to his original point, namely that you belong to whatever you join yourself in fellowship with. Paul wanted the Corinthians to consider whether or not the idol, Greek word, idolin, idulon, meaning whatever represents the form of an object, either real or imaginary, was really anything at all. Further, Paul wanted the Corinthians to consider whether the meat offered to those idols had any significance. Paul did not dispute the belief that there was some source of power behind the idols because he understood that some demonic force was at work. See Deuteronomy 32 verse 17. In partaking of this sacrifice, Greek word, 
Thro, Ticho O, meaning slaughter, slay, or kill, offered to idols, Paul was telling the Corinthians that they were joining in fellowship with whatever the sacrifice was dedicated to, and in this case, it was to devil's Greek word, daimonion, dehemonion, meaning evil spirits or the messengers and ministers of Satan. Paul concluded this portion of his discourse with the Corinthians by reminding them that it is not possible to have fellowship with the one true Lord and with the devil at the same time. A choice must be made. To partake of both the Lord's table and the heathen's feast would only serve to provoke God to jealousy. Israel had not been able to stand before the might of Jehovah and neither would the Corinthian believers. Search the scriptures. Questions one and two. One, Paul warns believers that they cannot drink the cup of the Lord and of the... 2a. Paul asks the believers if they are trying to provoke the Lord to... 2b. What does it mean to endure temptation? James 1 verse 12. Bible application. Aim. Students will understand that no one is immune to temptation. The new sometimes includes reports of church leaders who fall into sin and are caught in the act or even die while yielding to temptation. How does this impact churches, communities, and families? What can we do to help strengthen leaders so they can endure temptation? Students' responses. Aim. Students will make a list of people who encourage them in times of temptation. An accountability partner can help provide the needed strength to endure temptation. Today, make a list of people who can keep you accountable in one or more areas. Ask God to show you who is the right person to assist you, then ask that person to partner with you. Dig a little deeper. Although the Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you, James 4, 7b, there are times when retreat is the best way to resist. The classic hymn, Yield Not to Temptation, mirrors scripture with the charge to fight manfully onward, dark passions subdue, look ever to Jesus, he will carry you through. The hymn omits a key phrase from 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 that God will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Sometimes to fight means to flee. The world tempts us with the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. 1 John 2 verses 15 to 16 and Paul directs the church to flee idolatry, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 14, which he equates with covetousness. Colossians 3 verse 56. Desiring things that others have and wanting beautiful things we see with our eyes can result in envy or pride and the love of money, 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. In a previous scripture, Paul instructs church members to flee fornication, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18, to run away from it as Joseph did when Potiphar's wife tempted him to sin, Genesis 39 verses 7 to 15. During the American Revolution, George Washington led his army on a winter retreat from the British Acro and the Delaware River, thereby saving them from decimation. Mao Zedong, the military and political leader of the Chinese Communist Revolution, retreated across treacherous landscapes from nationalist forces after World War II. This long march, as historians call it, gave him time and space to recruit and reorganize his army, which finally won a long, protracted war. Just as armies may retreat in order to ultimately experience victory, there are times in our spiritual warfare when God provides a way for us to retreat until we can build up our faith for the next battle against sin. He might remind us that we can turn the channel or just turn off the television or radio when we hear or see sin that might be attractive or overly familiar. He might say move on from a social media platform or turn off the device. He might say leave a place where sinful things begin to happen that tempt us to join in. God will provide a way out from sin and he will keep us from falling if we are willing to take the way he provides, which also includes flight, Jude 12 to 25 KJV. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that with every temptation you have given us a way of escape. Father, we ask that you would open our eyes to see where you have provided our means of escaping temptation and give us the strength to endure it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for listening to part two of Overcoming Temptation, pages 63 to 66. For more information about this lesson, please see Church of God in Christ website. And to God be the glory.